Welcome back to my channel and welcome on board Valiant Lady, one of the cruise ships in the Virgin Voyages fleet. Now in this video today, I am going to give you a full ship tour of every single venue on this cruise ship, starting from the bottom and working our way deck by deck all the way to the top. Now I recently was fortunate enough to spend 14 nights on board this cruise ship, so I'm confident that I can give you a pretty detailed tour of every single deck. Now as we go round, I'll try and offer you some tips based on my experience of what did and didn't work on this cruise. Now if you're interested in finding out more, then head over to my channel and stay tuned for loads more content from Virgin coming your way soon. But anyway, let's get down to our very first venue on deck 5, which is Sailor Services. Now this is essentially what Virgin refer to when they think about guest services or reception. So if you have anything going on on board that you'd need to speak to someone at a traditional guest services desk for, then you just have to come here and there'll be someone who'll be able to help. Now, moving out of that area, you'll find our first dining venue. So right next door to Sailor Services is Pink Agave. Now this is the onboard Mexican restaurant, or as Virgin Voyages would refer to it, Elevated Mexican. Now it is worth mentioning that the restaurant you can see here right now is not fully dressed for dinner. It was really difficult during this cruise to get into the restaurants when they were being set up without then filming crew members, which I try to avoid doing. So unfortunately you can see here, the tables aren't fully set. Now this restaurant is absolutely fantastic. It's one of my favorites on Virgin. Let me recommend to you to get in and try the tequila in here. It is such a hugely wide variety. Now, just across the hall, you'll find Razzle Dazzle, which is our second dining venue of the tour. Now, the theming in here is quite intense, so wait for it, but the background to it is really fascinating. Now, back in World War I, it was considered to be an effective method for disguising ships, that rather than painting a ship a specific colour, you would paint it with lots of black and white abstract lines going in lots of different directions. Now, that essentially was to make it more difficult to determine the course of that ship. So you can see here, there's a lot of black and white going on. There's a lot of different, <laughs> a lot of different things happening in this room. I was a really, really big fan of this space. Let me recommend to you to come in here for breakfast and try a fresh smoothie. I only found out a week and a half into my cruise that that was a thing in here and they were so, so good. So please take it from me and head in here and give one a try. Now, part of Razzle Dazzle is the red bar. Now, for any sailors or passengers who don't come in and try Razzle Dazzle, quite a lot of them don't actually know this bar exists. They do some of the most unique cocktails on the ship in here, including a very interesting popcorn one. So make sure you go in and give them a try. Now, the final venue on deck five before we move up is the Redemption Spa. Now, what I'm about to show you is, in my opinion, one of the most impressive spas that I've seen so far on board a cruise ship. Now, from a thermal suite point of view, it's going to cost you 59 US dollars to come in here on a sea day, and that will be for a three hour access pass, or $39 to come in here on a port day. So in other words, if the ship's docked, you're going to save quite a bit of money coming in here to use this facility. Now, what is actually in here? Now you can see that you've got the main pool, which operates as a sort of plunge pool here in the very middle of the room. And dotted around, you've got a number of much smaller, much warmer tub areas that serve more as hot tubs, I guess. You've then got loads of armchairs that you can relax in all the way around the pool. And then you've got this area here, which is actually, all these surfaces are heated, which oh, I just absolutely love this space. Now, in addition to that, you've then got a salt room, you've got a sauna, and you've also got a pretty good size of steam room, which you can see here. So pretty well equipped. This space is usually nice and quiet during the day as well, and they do limit how many people can go in there. Anyway, let's move up a deck. Welcome to the roundabout. Now, this is one of the hearts of the ship, and you'll find this right in the very middle of deck number six and also deck number seven, but you'll see that later on in the tour. Now there's a number of venues coming off the roundabout in all different directions, 
the first one that we need to look at on deck six is actually built into the base of the roundabout and that is on the rocks. Now this is one of the main cocktail bars on board and in here you'll find this to be the hub of activity at night. So every single night you'll find that you'll have live entertainment on the stage here and my bit of advice to you is to get here early because you can maybe tell here there's quite a lot of seats that don't look at the stage. So make sure you get there nice and early if you want to have a view of the performer. Now coming off of the roundabout in the other direction is Dry Dock. Now this is the onboard hairdresser. You will see where the beauty salon is, but that's way up on deck 15. So we'll get to that later in the tour. But if you're looking to get your hair done, then you can come into Dry Dock and those guys will happily sort you out. Or next door to that, you'll find the barber. So this is stubble and groom. So you can find ladies in Dry Dock, gents at the barber. You've then got Eyes and Shine followed by the booty free shop which is duty free mostly jewellery in there and then you'll find directly next door one of the most talked about venues on the ship now this is squid ink and this is the onboard tattoo parlor so if you're looking to get a bit of ink done while you're cruising then this is exactly where you'll come to do it now if that's not your thing and you'd rather have a flutter in the casino then you'll find that directly next door to the tattoo parlour remaining on deck 6. Now the way the casino splits, this isn't a huge casino so it's really easy to explain. You walk in and first of all you've got the bar that you can see there, you've then got one area of slot machines followed by the gaming tables and then at the far end of the room you can see the final banks of slot machines. Now in comparison to other American cruise ships, the casino in here is particularly small. I've recently cruised on some much, much bigger ships and the casinos on there definitely bear more of a resemblance to what you'd expect to see in a Vegas style environment. But in here, it, it definitely isn't very big at all. Now that said, I never had to wait for any machine that I wanted to try. So yeah, I think it probably is about the right size for Virgin to be honest with you. Now coming off the casino, you've then got the manor. This is one of the most Instagrammable spots on the ship. So make sure you stop in here and get your photo taken before your night out begins. Now this is a multi-use venue. So in here, you'll find that they'll do dinner shows. They'll also do the drag entertainment in here. You'll also come in here for various workouts during the day. So yeah, there's a lot of variety in here. You'll find that this is also the onboard nightclub and it's got all these little hidden rooms in it. It's a really, really nice space actually. So you've got the ground floor, you've also then got the upstairs where you can just perch with a cocktail and discreetly watch the show from above. Now directly next door to that, at the very, very front of the ship, let me show you the red room. Now this is Virgin's take on a traditional cruise ship theatre. So if I show you inside, you can see here, it looks pretty similar to what you'd expect to see from a normal theatre, doesn't it? Now where this venue gets interesting is that it completely evolves. So if I now show you, here it is as one of the onboard nightclub party venues. So the whole venue essentially moves and collapses in order to suit whatever the event is. It's so interesting. Here it is again, set up to play bingo in. It's really impressive actually. And I like how Virgin have done this, where they're challenging a traditional theatre, but they're not getting rid of it. So yeah, big thumbs up. Now, we're going all the way back to the other side of the roundabout now. First up, you're going to find the high street shops. Now, this is where you can come and, you guessed it, do some shopping. Now, the shops, when I filmed this footage, were all closed. The reason for that is that I found it to be quite a busy, well-used space on board. So it was quite difficult actually to film the shops without getting lots of other passengers in. So hopefully you're getting a decent feel for what the shopping area is like. Generally speaking, pretty premium with some really well-known brands in there. And coming off the back of the shops, you'll find first up Extra Virgin. Now there's another dining venue that we'll get to in a second, but let's cover Extra Virgin first. Now this is the onboard Italian restaurant. My advice to you is that this one, in addition to the wake, which we'll get to in a little bit, books up so quickly, so, so quickly. I've been on a number of Virgin ships now and I've only managed to dine in here one time. So yeah, if you're a fan of Italian, make sure you book in here as early as you possibly can. 
Now, you'll see that the restaurant here is designed with loads of different seating options. You've got smaller tables, larger tables, you've then got booths, and you've also got tables which look directly into that open plan preparation area. So, lots of choice, and generally speaking, I've only heard good things about this restaurant. Now, let's move across the hall to the test kitchen. Now, this restaurant is a laboratory-style restaurant where the menu is pretty unique in comparison to the other restaurants. Now, the reason for that is that the whole menu is designed using single words for each course. For example, course number one might be egg. Course number two might be mushroom. You don't know the detail of that course until it arrives in front of you. Now, you can see here the theming is also so different to what you'll find in any of the other dining venues that I'm going to show you today. You can either choose to sit at one of the lower down, more traditional dining tables, or you can actually sit at tables that look straight into where they prepare the food. So this restaurant at the point of my cruise, if you're on a seven night sailing, then you'll have one menu that will remain the same for the whole cruise. Or if you're on a slightly longer cruise, then it'll change halfway through, which is cool. Anyway, welcome to the groupie. Now we've moved up a deck, we're now on deck seven, and this is the onboard karaoke lounge. If you're looking to come in here as a couple, or if you're looking to come in here as a slightly larger group, then they'll have room sizes that'll accommodate. All you have to do is pop in, put your name and your cabin number on the booking sheet, and then it's all good to go. Now directly beside karaoke, you'll find SIP, this is one of, in my opinion, the nicest bars on board the ship. Now, I would use this bar to come in and relax with a cocktail after dinner, but one of the other main uses of this space is afternoon tea. Now, unfortunately, afternoon tea doesn't come included with your cruise fare on a Virgin Voyages cruise. You do have to pay extra for it, and at the point of recording this video, it was 19 US dollars per person for afternoon tea without fizz, or 35 US dollars per person for afternoon tea, including fizz. Now moving on from SIP, heading towards the back of the ship, you'll now find the chart room. Now this is where you have to come to book any of your shore excursions, and this is where you'll also find the ship model. So if you'd like to see a small version of Ali and Lady, then just head along to the chart room. Directly beside the chart room, is where you're going to go if you'd like to explore the opportunity to book future cruises and directly opposite that is where you'll find Voyage Vinyl which is the onboard record store. If you're fortunate enough to be staying in a suite on board the ship a lot of them will have record players so all you have to do if you're looking to get more vinyl is head down here and have a look at what's on offer. Now directly next door to that you're going to find Draft House, which is the on-board beer bar. And directly next door to that is the ice cream shop. Now, we won't mention the name. You can read that for yourself. But ice cream on a Virgin Cruise is totally included in your cruise fare. And look at how many different flavours there are. And it's such good quality. So you can come in here, get a cone, or get a tub. Now... All of these venues come off of the upper level of the roundabout that I told you about earlier. You can see here, the theming of this space is absolutely beautiful. Generally speaking, during the day, it was pretty quiet here. So if you're looking to come down, do a bit of work, do a bit of reading, or just lose yourself, then this could be the place to do it. Now, let's go back to talking about food. Welcome to the pizza place. Now this is, as the name suggests, the onboard pizza parlour. Now you can come in here, you can either order your pizza which is made to order using the pizza ovens behind the counter there, or you can come in and grab a salad from those fridges over on your left hand side. Now you can either choose to dine indoors or dine outdoors, or you can also take away. So they will give you your pizza in a box that you can take to elsewhere on the ship. Now the other side of the ship from the pizza place is the Grounds Club. This is one of the onboard coffee shops where you can find coffee and a snack, morning, noon or night. Now generally speaking, this venue closes around 7pm, so if you are looking for coffee later than that, you just have to head up to the galley, which is the onboard buffet. Now a glance at the day 
is the onboard schedule of events. So make sure you pick that up here if you want it on paper rather than just on your app. Now directly down the hall from the coffee shop is where you'll find the social club. Now in here, it's more diner themed food. So think chicken wings, think floats, think hot dogs, all that kind of thing. And one of my tips for here is this machine is $2 a shot. And if you manage to catch one of the balls, then you're gonna be taking that down to the gift shop to get a prize. So yeah, little bit different. And do you know what? It's just good fun. Now over here, you've got loads of tables and chairs, some really nice window seats where you can play any of the board games. Look at how many board games are available to borrow in here. There's no charge. You just have to pop over, take what you want as long as you bring it back. Now this is also the part of the ship that you'll find the arcade. I'm already haunted at the thought of that Space Invaders machine because I was completely addicted during my cruise. Now this is all free of charge. You don't pay anything to use the arcade on a Virgin Cruise, which is a great way to come down and spend half an hour or however long you want. Now right next door you'll find the Loose Cannon. Now I always say this is one of my favorite bars on board because it's so tucked away the theming is so nautical, I just love it in here. Now remember while you're here, pop over and sign the guest book. My challenge to you is if you are cruising on Valiant Lady, try and find what I wrote. See if you can find it and let me know down in the comments. And remember to take your favorite music with you because the jukebox in here is free of charge. Okay, moving further towards the back of the ship, here's the dock house. Now this venue is where you'll find, you guessed it, more evening entertainment. Now think much more chilled out vibes in here. You're much more likely to find quite a light band in here. You're likely to find quizzes in here. You're likely to find acoustic music in here. It's a really, really nice space. The design in here is absolutely beautiful. It feels almost beach clubby in here. This here is the bar that you'll find obviously closed at the point of recording this video. But this bar then takes you out to the juice bar which i'll show you in a sec and then out to the very back of the ship now this juice bar was closed at the point of my cruise but you could find juices by heading down to razzle dazzle or by the pool okay final venue before we look at the back of deck seven is the wake now this is the onboard steak and seafood restaurant and although it's located the entrance is located on deck seven the actual restaurant itself is down there on deck six now, from an accessibility point of view, if you aren't comfortable or not able to use those stairs, then just check in with the concierge up on deck seven, and then you'll be shown round to the elevator to make your way down to deck number six. So do not worry about booking this restaurant if you're a little bit concerned about that flight of stairs. Now, look at the view. The view from here is absolutely stunning. Now, you are looking right out over the wake at the very back of the ship. And on that note, I feel as though I should offer a little word of warning because you do feel the ship moving here. Now, the main reason for that is that if you've got the propellers directly underneath churning through the water, obviously there will be a slight rumble up here. So if you're a little bit more sensitive, then it might be worth just bearing that in mind. But overall, beautiful restaurant. The food in here is absolutely gorgeous. So yeah, make sure you get booked in. Okay, ready for our penultimate part of deck number seven. Now here's the dock. This is, honestly, wait until you see this. This has been so well designed. Now during the day, you can come here and sunbathe. You can also come here and have snacks off the tapas style menu, or you can come here at night for events such as stargazing. Look at this venue. The location of it is absolutely remarkable. It's turned into its own little club back here. I also found that during the day, even when there were a lot of people here, it would be quite a quiet part of the ship. So if you want to come and soak in all the views, whether you're at sea or whether you are like right here in port, this is one of the places to do it. Now the final part of deck seven is the promenade deck. Now this is a huge, huge, huge thumbs up for me because so many modern cruise ships now have come away from the traditional elements. But you can see here, even with the traditional deck chairs and the inclusion of a traditional shuffleboard deck game, 
Virgin are giving a really nice nod to the tradition here. Now you can see as we walk around, this is such a good space. This walkway actually goes all the way around under the front of the ship and back out the other side. What I would say about this deck is that if you do come down and you find that one side of the ship is in the shade, chances are the other side is going to be in the sun. Now this is also a designated quiet area on board, so deck 7 will be way, way quieter than what you'll find upstairs. Speaking of upstairs, let's go and check it out. Now the first venue to look at is the tune-up. Now this is the onboard beauty studio, so I won't take you in there, but if you're looking for a manicure, pedicure, that's where you'd go. And directly outside there, you'll find the aquatic club. Now this is the main pool from Virgin, which is, yeah, relatively controversial. A lot of people find it far too small. And directly beside that, you'll find gym and tonic. Now this is more of a wellness area with a more kind of leisure style pool surrounded by loungers, a couple of hot tubs and a bar. And on either side of that pool, you'll find the gym areas. Now for the purpose of explaining it as easily as I can in this video, Let's say that the gym is split in two, one on one side of the pool and one on the other. Now one is a white gym, one is a black gym. Now the white gym is what you're looking at right now, which focuses mostly on strength and conditioning training, whereas the black gym is very different, so we'll head over and look at that in a sec. Now in the white gym, you'll find a whole host of fixed weight machines and you'll also find free weights in here as well. And if we now head across the corridor and check out the black gym, this is where you'll find mostly cardio workout equipment. Now, it is worth mentioning that I found all of the equipment in this gym to be absolutely excellent. All of the digital screens on the equipment were great. Every single machine was working, which is actually pretty rare for a cruise ship gym that everything would be working. So really big thumbs up and I really enjoyed using this during my cruise. Now there's also a full digitally equipped spin studio here, which I didn't use, but remember fitness classes are included. So if you like spin, then you can head up and check that out. Now lockers are also free to use. So yeah, you just have to pop a pin in and then your stuff will be safe while you work out. Now ironically, right beside the gym, you're going to find the galley which is Virgin's answer to the onboard buffet. Now, whether or not I like this, I'm going to protect this video from my view because I could go on forever <laughs> about all of the things I don't like about this venue, but I just want to use this video to show you. If you'd like to learn more about what I do and don't like, then head over to my channel and let me talk to you more in my other Virgin videos. But you can see here there's a a pretty decent selection and it's themed to be much more like you're visiting various different vendors at, for example, a street food market rather than it being a traditional cruise ship buffet. So yeah, whether you're looking for sushi, whether you're looking for a fry up, whatever you're looking for, you'll generally speaking find it in this area. Now you can also dine outdoors, which that is a really big thumbs up for me. So you can either eat inside or you can eat in this shaded area out at the very, very back of the ship. Now, coming off of the buffet, you're going to find one of my favourite dining venues on board, and that's Gunbei, which is the onboard Korean restaurant. Now, if you've never eaten Korean before, the concept in here is very different to teppanyaki, but essentially, the food is cooked in the middle of your table, so you can hopefully see the circles that are in the middle of each table, that lifts up and it becomes a grill and then they cook straight on that grill. Now in here I did meet people who had requirements where they couldn't eat food that was cooked on a grill alongside meat and they were really really accommodating but I really enjoy Gunby overall. Now deck number 16, the penultimate deck of the ship, welcome to Richard's rooftop. So if you're staying in a suite on board Valiant Lady then you'll have access to Richard's rooftop. This is essentially a private sweet guest only sun deck at the very top at the very front of the ship so most people won't see in there but if you are in a suite make yourself at home now back into the main areas this is the sun club cafe which specializes in various bowls and snacks that if you are enjoying some time on the deck you can go over there and get a quick bite to eat now speaking of deck spaces here's deck number 16 
Now this is obviously the deck one above the pool and look at the amount of different seating options up here. Now whether you want to be on a lounger, on a sofa, in these kind of metal style chairs, there's so many options up here. Now the cruise I was on, we were operating below full capacity but I never struggled to sit down on the decks. So I'm, I would say that Virgin Ships handle people outside really, really well. Now next venue, let's look at the Athletic Club. This is just slightly further back on deck 16 and this fitness zone looks at both indoor exercise here and also the hugely vast outdoor exercise here. Now you've got boxing, you've got various other pieces of equipment all the way down the deck there and to be honest, I never ever ever found this to be busy at all during my cruise. So if you are looking to take a Virgin Cruise with the mindset of remaining fit and active while you're on vacation, then this is probably going to be where you want to do it. Now, if fitness isn't your thing, you can also hang out, play table football, you can also play chess if that's your kind of thing, so there's a lot going on up here. And the venue right at the very back of the ship, this is what it looks like here. Now, you've got day beds, you've got chairs where you can sit up, you've then got sofas that go all the way around the curve at the very back of the ship this is a really really nice spot and you've also got the net here now the net is essentially well a net that you can walk out on you can get your photo on here and that down there is the ocean so it's quite a drop down below there so not for the faint-hearted now the final thing to look at on deck 16 are the cabanas now these are private bookable areas that if you'd like to spend a day in your own cabana as a couple as a solo as a family whatever then you can speak to sailor services or if you're in one of the top suites speak to your rockstar agent and they'll be able to get you booked in here you do pay for them but to be honest look at the amount of deck space like i don't think you need it now deck 17 this is the runway which is the onboard running track now six laps of this track equate to one mile so it's a decent length of track actually for being on a cruise ship and what I would say is it's perfect because it doesn't go through sunbathing space the way that running tracks on a lot of cruise ships do. Now the final venue up here is the Perch. Now this is just a sun deck at the very very top of deck 17. So yeah, if you want to come chill out in the sun away from the crowds, this might be your home from home. And that is my full guided ship tour of Valiant Lady. Now I really really hope you've enjoyed this tour. If you have it would be great if you could jump down below the video and give it a thumbs up and I would love to show you so much more from so many more ships. If you'd like to come along on the journey and support the channel then all you have to do is click subscribe. But Thank you so much for watching and I'll hopefully see you in my next video.